Hey everyone, welcome to our midweek edition of Project S3 and today we're going to be taking this car apart. We're going to find that air leak and so that we can then do another pressure test and then make sure that our car is ready for the coolant because we don't want to have a leak and then having to waste all this money on, on coolant because it isn't cheap. It's, you know, £34 for 10 litre, which I guess isn't bad. But anyway, enough waffling. Let's crack on, take this radiator apart get this car sealed so that we can start topping it up and then finally let's see if we can get this car moving today okay so if you recall from last week i was suspecting that in there somewhere that's where i was hearing the noise and i suspect there is a little coupler um a bit like the one that we were waiting for that i'm pretty sure that had a little crack on it and i suspect that that's where our leak is coming from but let's take all of this radiator off We'll take off the slam panel and then what we'll do is we'll leave the original radiator because we need that. We'll pump up our system again and then we'll listen out and see where our leak is before we get down and finally isolate that problem. Okay, so this is what I've done. So I've taken off all the downpipe here leading into the throttle body so I can get better access to this system here, this pump here. Um, so this is the pipe that I suspect that is causing my leak. Now this pipe goes right into here, fits into this, uh, this, this link here. Now here, you can just see down here, this is broken although it doesn't seem to be affected although that's what I think but I think that this is where our leak is coming from this pipe here so we're going to connect that up we'll pressure test the system again and now that we've got the all of this out of the way we are going to have to put the radiator back but um, what I'll do is I'll just hang the radiator without any of the um, bits and bobs and that should work just fine. So let's just see if that is where the issue is. Okay, so we've got our radiator hanging in place, all connected up. We've connected up all of our pipes. We've got this, we've disconnected from the top of the radiator fan assembly, so we've got our link. So let's pressurize our system again, and uh, let's see if we can identify where that leak is coming from. So here we go. Okay, so it's going down again. I'm just gonna pressurize it a little bit more now that the pressure. Okay, looks like it's coming from here. 
Yeah, in fact, I can see a split. There you go. You can see a, you can see a split right there. That's where it's coming from. I don't, I don't think this is the only place. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this pipe, I'm gonna cut this pipe back, and then we'll try that again. So let me do that, and then we'll, we'll do a pressurize again. Because I'm not convinced that this is the only place. I think it might be coming out from here as well, but let's try. Okay, so I have just pumped it up again for a spare you the grief and it is holding better but it's still going down I could just see it's, something is coming out still you see it's dropping you probably can't see it on camera but we still seem to have a leak somewhere so I'm going to have to see if I can find where that is but you can see now it's dropped down to uh, 2 just make sure it isn't around the head here but we do still seem to have some kind of a leak so let me investigate that further and see if I can uh, figure out where that is well I have pumped this up twice now and, and it's still going down but I can't hear any hissing so I'm just wondering whether or not it could actually be this seal here that's releasing air because there's nothing obvious there's no sound. The socket that I suspected was gonna be at fault, this one here, when I wobble it, there's no air coming out. The air was definitely coming out of here. You can see it coming out, you can feel it. But now, that is solid. The other end is solid too. So, just wondering whether it's more of a red herring, because this does move around here. You can see it moving. And it is a tight seal, and yet this is still going down, but I just cannot see or sense um, hear the sound coming out of it to, to um, say that we've actually definitely got a leak. And I, and I just think if we did have a leak, it's going to be somewhere around here where the problem is. Hmm, mystery. But definitely can't hear anything leaking out, so what I think I might just do is... Well, I might just top it up because, and then see if we're actually seeing if we're going to lose any coolant, get the car up to temperature and see if there's any coolant leak. And if there is, then we'll just have to drain it down and see if we can discover where that leak is. But at the moment, I just can't find anything. And really, this is the time to actually to find the leak. Right. Okay. Let's, um, let's top it up. Okay guys, so I think we found the issue. Um, the issue was this there. There's a little rubber bung. And the minute I put that bung on, then it started to hold the pressure. Um, so I am now completely satisfied that this is sealed. There are no leaks anywhere. And we can commence filling this up. So it's just that rubber bung there. So notice in this kit, it had um these different bungs in there and the minute i put that on there it just started to hold the pressure so with that i'm happy so we can continue to um top this up which is good news so let's um yeah let's get on and first of all reassemble all the pipes that we've just taken apart and then get this thing rebuilt Okay, so we're back where we started. We've got everything mounted and back up. 
So now is the time when we come to fill up the coolant system. And you may be wondering, why are we using this vacuum kit? This is a snap-on kit, but you can get these kits on eBay for about 30, 40 pounds. Get a good, the best one you can. But the reason why you use this it's actually stipulated in the Audi manual to use a kit, but they use the Audi one, uh, Snap-on and other companies do this. Now, as I've explained before, because of the complexity of the cooling system, there's absolutely no way that just by topping this up using conventional pour method, will you get all the water circulating in the system. The only way you can do this is by using a vacuum pump system with a, a compressor. And it's quite an effective way of bleeding your car because most modern cars, they have a lot of intricate, intricate pipe work. And um, the water goes up and down, etc. You imagine that the water comes up this high. Um, this is the highest point, this pipe here. Um, and then we've got pipes down the back there for the matrix. The heater matrix goes up to there. So it's, it's not only impossible to try and bleed this system. Now you're supposed to have the heating system on, but we haven't got the um, we haven't got the car connected up, so we may get some air in the system, um, but we should be able to bleed it out with with this. So let's get this on. So essentially, what we'll do is we'll mount our t tank up here, our our um, coolant, which you can see down there, and the coolant that we're chosen, or the coolant that is specified for this car. And it's really important that you get the right coolant for modern day cars. Um, this is G13, which is specified for most cars in the Audi range. This is Ready Mix G13. It's a combination of um, protection um, uh, coolant system um, with made uh, mixed up with um, di distilled water. That's what I'm trying to get out. So basically, it's pure water for the system which means that the different types of pipe work that we have in this car and we've got you know steel block or cast iron block and etc etc the different types of metal don't doesn't this system will protect it in, in other words so it's very important that you use the correct one so this is triple qx purple antifreeze summer coolant as you can see there but it's specified g13 now we need two of these because this car takes 10 liters so i'm going to show you the process now and um yeah let's just show you the process okay so the process is pretty simple here's our rubber bung that we were missing uh, earlier on so we put that into place and that's going to help us create a nice tight seal then we've got our vacuum pump so we stick that in and that just sits in there like that so essentially once we create a vacuum inside the system the cooling system this will hold tight in place um, next thing we need to do we need to connect up our airline So that's it in place and then what we'll do is we will pump up the system or we'll basically take this right up to about oh about 2.5 bar okay and by doing that we'll suck all the air out of the system then we'll get it ready for the next stage we need to make sure that this tap is off first of all otherwise it will be just sucking in air which is what we don't want so we'll do that now you'll hear the compressor come on in, a, in shortly as we um, get the system up to pressure Right, okay, so we'll just give it a little bit more. We'll take it up to about 2.5. Now we're ready to prime. That's really important that we don't let this run dry, otherwise we have to start the whole process again. So we'll open up the valve and you will see the um, first lot of coolant start going in.
Okay, so that's one done. Let's get the other one ready. We've still got some coolant in there, and what I'll do, I'll top this one up. It's part of the process. Right, okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start the car up now, just to let it run for about uh, a few minutes, and then we'll um, see what happens with the water. Hopefully the water will go down and um, start circulating, and we'll check to see if, if the fans come on as well. Just a cable, just wonder what that noise was. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so successful test I think. <laughs> I think that fan was going crazy uh, from the get-go, but I'm guessing that that's possibly because of a sensor. It can't detect something, so the fan is coming on in failsafe, which is to run full hilt to protect the engine. So we'll figure out what, what, what's causing that because we have got a few cut wires that we still need to investigate. But the car seemed to run fine. I do need to do a long-term test, but what we need to do is get this car out of here first. So that's going to be the, the next thing that we're going to do. Get the car out of the garage at last. Okay, so that's it for this week. So next week we are going to deal with the issue that you heard with a fan running really high. And um, we're, going, we're now getting into the electrical fixes staging of this uh, this car so we're making some fine progress there so uh, thank you for viewing this one it's been a bit of a long one today but you guys have been asking me for a longer video so you have got it so don't forget to subscribe down here press that bell notification so that you know when we release new videos and you can keep up to date with project s3 so have a good rest of the week guys and we will see you on monday